Hello, boys and girls. I miss you guys so, so very much. That's why I decided to send you this little video in which I will be reading a book to you guys today. And here to help me is your favorite fifth grade patrol, Benjamin. Come on over and say hi, Benny. Hello. This book is called Chester's Way by Kevin Henkes. And I know most of you have heard this one already. It's an oldie, but a goodie. So here we go. Chester had his own way of doing things. Hello, my name is Chester. I like croquet and peanut butter and making my bed. He always cut his sandwich diagonally. He always got out of bed at, on the same side and never left the house without double knotting his shoes. Chester always had the same thing for breakfast, toast with jam and peanut butter. And he always carried a miniature first aid kit in his back pocket, just in case. You definitely have a mind of your own, said Chester's mother. That's one way to put it, said Chester's father. Chester's best friend, Wilson, was, ex was exactly the same way. That's why they were best friends. Chester c wouldn't play baseball unless Wilson played, and they never swung at the first pitch or slid head first. Wilson wouldn't ride his bike unless Chester wanted to, and they always used hand signals. If Chester was hungry, Wilson was too, but they rarely ate between meals. Some days, I can't tell those two apart, said Wilson's mother. Me either, said Wilson's father. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester, that's the way it was. They loved to go on picnics. Once, when Wilson accidentally swallowed a watermelon seed and cried because he was afraid a watermelon plant would grow inside him, Chester swallowed one too. Don't worry, said Chester. Now, if you grow a watermelon plant, I'll grow one too. Chester duplicated his Christmas list every year and gave a copy to Wilson because they, were, because they always wanted the same thing anyway. For Halloween, they always dressed as things that went together. Salt and pepper shakers, two mittens on a string, ham and eggs. They really are two peas in a pod, said Chester's mother. Looks like it, said Chester's father. In spring, Chester and Wilson sh shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they rake leaves together. And in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester, that's the way it was. And then Lily moved into the neighborhood. Lily had her own way of doing things. I'm Lily, I'm the queen, I like everything! She wore band-aids all over her arms and legs to look brave. She talked backwards to herself sometimes, so no one would know what she was saying. I m a e l i l. She and she never left the house without one of her nifty disguises. Lily waved at all the cars that passed by, even if she didn't know who was in them. And she always carried a loaded squirt gun in her back pocket, just in case. She definitely has a mind of her own, said Chester. That's one way to put it, said Wilson. When Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said they were busy. When she called them up on the phone, they disguised their voices and said they weren't home. If Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson crossed to the other and hid. She's something else, said Chester. Looks like it, said Wilson. One day, while Chester and Wilson were practicing their hand signals, some older boys rode by, popping wheelies. They circled Chester and Wilson and yelled personal remarks. Chester and Wilson didn't know what to do. Just when they were about to give up hope, a fierce-looking cat with horrible fangs jumped out of the bushes and frightened the older boys away. Are you who I think you are? Chester asked the cat. Of course, the cat replied. Thank you, Lily, said Chester. You're welcome, Chester, said Lily. Thank you, Lily, said Wilson. You're welcome, Wilson, said Lily. I'm glad you were wearing a disguise, said Chester. And I'm glad you had your squirt gun, said Wilson. I always do, said Lily, just in case. Afterward, Chester invited Lily over for lunch. You have a muscle mouse cup, said Lily. Of course, said Chester. I do too, said Lily. 
Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson cut their sandwiches diagonally. Lily asked Chester's mother if she had cookie cutters, and then she made stars and flower and, and flowers and bells. That's neat, said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. That night, Lily invited Chester and Wilson to sleep over. You have a nightlight, said Chester. Of course, said Lily. I do too, said Chester. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson wanted toast with jam and peanut butter for breakfast the next morning. Boring, said Lily. Try this instead. This is good, said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. After that, when Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said yes. When she called them up on the phone, they had a pleasant conversation. And if Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson waved and ran to catch up with her. Chester and Wilson taught Lily hand signals, and she taught them how to pop wheelies. Lily taught Chester and Wilson how to talk backwards, and they taught her how to double knot her shoes. I, ma, nos, lo, ole. Some days I can't tell those three apart, said Lily's mother. Me either, said Lily's father. Chester and Wilson and Lily. <laughs> Chester and Wilson and Lily. Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. For Halloween, they dressed as the three blind mice. For Christmas, Lily gave Chester and Wilson nifty disguises. And they gave her a box of multicolored shoelaces. Extra long for double knotting. They loved to go on picnics. When Chester and Wilson told Lily about how they each had swallowed a watermelon seed once, Lily swallowed three of them. I'll grow a watermelon plant for each of us, she said. In spring, Chester and Wilson and Lily shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they raked leaves together. And in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson and Lily. Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. Ellipsis. And then Victor moved into the neighborhood. I wonder what happens when Victor moves into the neighborhood. I know, right? Maybe there's just more and more people that keep coming and it becomes an endless loop of the same thing over and over. Could be. You never know. Well, boys and girls, we really hope that you like this story. And I would love to hear back from you. If you have your parents' permission and their help, you can comment below and let me know how your spring break has gone so far. And we will definitely be back to see you again soon. Bye.